process of making uh, a quilt and product of quilt itself provides an opportunity to give outlet to thwarted energies. There are suppressed emotions, uh, you know, feelings, passions. Everything is given an outlet by uh, giving an, uh, get, when, when they get an opportunity to create a quilt. The quilt is made of fragments. We all know that it is made up of bits and pieces of discarded garments, which is actually all these bits and pieces will belong to your forefathers and foremothers. And in effect, it results in a reconciliation between relations between people. So since this uh, quilt making, the process of quilt making, uh, you know, it involves a kind of sewing together, stitching together the pieces, the bits, the borrowed materials, the materials taken from the fabric that belong to your foremothers and forefathers and your uncles and your cousins and all your relatives and friends. So there is a kind of a reconciliation between relations, a reconciliation between people, even in the, the, the quilt that is created. All these diverse designs of different generations of relatives are sewn together to make it a united material. So a united material is created because it's a quilt uh, which is united because it is stitched together using different fabrics, different sizes, different shapes and different colors and different you know, material. Everything is stitched together in order to make a complete integrated quilt. As I have told you, uh, you know, in my, uh, at the beginning, the imagery of quilt plays a significant role in African-American women's writing. The idea of female creativity as a means of overcoming oppression and the transcendence that may occur through such artistic activity is explored in many writings, especially in Alice Walker's The Color Purple in Everyday Use, one of her famous short stories, Everyday Use. We know that. Alice Walker's color purple, the color purple itself, you know, it is, it is actually an epistle of experience. It is, a, it, it is a novel which, is, which consists of lots of letters. These letters itself, they are fragments. These fragments are pieces of quilt. Uh, you know, the pieces or fragments of her experiences from her life. So it is sewn together in the form of a novel. So we feel we can experience, we can understand the texture uh, in the narrative of the novel itself, the texture of the quilt, the metaphor of the quilt in the novel itself. The, she celebrates the wellsprings of creative spirituality that has allowed black women through years of oppression to be artists. Their art might not be recognizable to the eye trained towards high culture, the elite white culture. We all know that um, African-American women or African-American writers, all they, all they were trying to evolve in a, uh, you know, in a mainstream culture, mainstream culture that is dominated by the white, white men and white women. So they are struggling in order to express, in order to give an outlet to their own voice. So, uh, you know, when we look at, uh, you know, Alice Walker's or any other black woman's writing, the uh, th this art might not be because their art of their art in the sense their art of creativity their art of writing it may not be recognizable it may not be you know understood by it not may not be recognized by the eye that is trained towards high culture that is what the high culture is the white culture in quills made from rags stories and blue songs wrung from life, experience and gardens raised from rocky soil. Black women for generations have passed down to their daughters a need and the ability to create art and beauty from the artifacts of daily life. That is, uh, this is again about the quilt making. In quilt making, as I have, uh, you know, said already told you, uh, in quilt making, there are lots of fabrics, lots of Bits are they, pieces are they, scraps, you know, from your uncles, aunties, cousins, and forefathers, forefathers and foremothers. All these relatives' materials are sewn into it. Here, you are taking the fabric, taking the texture of life from your everyday. And you are giving an ability to your, you are passing on an ability to your uh, daughters, because this is given at the time of your wedding. Uh, you know, at, at the same time, it is a need. You need this quilt in order to wrap, your, uh, wrap yourself up 
and this when you wrap yourself up using this quilt it gives you a kind of warmth and you are you experience the love and the comfort that is provided from the pieces and the bits that is sewn together in this quilt in walkers is in search of our mother's gardens she writes about quilt in the smithsonian institute that was made by an anonymous black woman and walkers says if they could locate her she might turn out to be one of their grandmothers in walkers short story every day use there are two characters two daughters are there and you know that one daughter she she is perfectly following the african way of life and the other daughter traditional way of life and the other daughter you know she is a hybrid she is a cross between the african and the black and the american the white and she she as a she is a person who tries to emulate the white ways of life the the name everything she changes but the other daughter you know she tries to stick on to her values her traditional beliefs everything that is pertaining to africa so that story also uh, glorifies the art of quilt making and its special meaning is elaborated in that story every day use the title every day use itself you know tells you about uh, you know it is actually the material or the fabric or the texture is woven out of it is created out of everyday artifacts everyday material from your everyday life even you know uh, you know in that story the author talks about you know a churn that is used by every one of us in our kitchen in order to churn the curd so there are lots of things that is mentioned in the book that that is uh, about the everyday material so uh, when we talk about you know the novel the novel talks about her everyday experience everyday circumstances everyday the agony she experiences the misery and the pain she the, she goes through in her everyday life in the same manner your your uh, you know quilt it consists of the bits the scraps the pieces and even the color and the design everything taken from everyday life of the people around you the people in your family the color purple uh, in the color purple quilt symbolizes a bond between women because even the quilting is done between women or you know they sit together and they start stitch stitching they start sewing it and this is actually the quilt making it is an empowering activity for the african american women it strengthens them it empowers them and it gives them an ability to define their own self because they are actually they are in a quest to, to, to define and this gives them an ability to define the novel is woven in the form of a colorful quilt why it is a colorful quilt colorful in the ten sense you know it contains your pains it contains your emotions it contains your your happiness your joy your 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 anxiety your fears your frustration and your your hopes and your dreams everything is sewn into it again similarly what you find is in the color purple which is in the form of an epistle because it is a, it is fragmentation and quilting fragmented identity of the uh, of the protagonist silly is quilted together in the form of letters continuous letters first she is writing to god then she is writing to her sister so it is sewn together it is stitched together in the form of quilt the process that is practiced in quilt making it is the same thing that is practiced or that is followed in letter writing this is why i tell you it is the fragmented identity it is quilted and it is an epistle of experience that you find in the color purple epistle means letters so epistles are combined together in order to tell you about the journey of life of silly the protagonist in the novel it describes like motifs in a quilt various patches uh, of painful experiences silly the protagonist of the novel had to go through since the age of 14 see uh, you know since the age of 14 we can imagine a girl is actually uh, uh, on the threshold of teenage and at the age of 14 the the miseries and the bitter experiences that she has to go through it is something indescribable but the letter the the novel which is in the form of continuous letters to god and her sister nati it describes all the painful experiences the agony and the trauma that she goes through in her life 
the novel, which is an epistolary patchwork of fragments. That is what I have already said. It is an epistolary, epistle, epistolary novel. Uh, it is in the form of letter writing. Epistolary patchwork of fragments. Patchwork means one letter you write, you receive a reply, you may receive or you may not. Again, you write a letter, but these are all fragments of your experiences. These are not, you know, sometimes you, you do not know where you have stopped your previous letter and you do not know where you are beginning, whether it has got a sequence of thought or anything. You are not very sure because you are least bothered because you are so much worried about your own life. It's an epistolary patchwork of fragments unfolds the life of Seely, who after having been raped by her stepfather, was married to a neighbor farmer who needed a mother or maid for his children. So she was raped at the age of 14. She was raped by her father, by her stepfather. Then she was married to a very elderly man and but he doesn't need a wife he needed a mother for her for his child and he or he needed a maid to look after his household the story evolves through the many letters that Seely writes to god and later to her sister neti who is a missionary in africa because after writing for a short time she thinks that Oh, God is also, she brings patriarchy there. God is also a male. And the male, you know, the man will never be able to understand me because the man around her, the men around her, not only the man around, man, man in her immediate premises, the men around her, they were all cruel to her or they were, you know, she has received only bitter experiences from her. So she thinks that even God is uh, not merciful towards her. God is even, even very unkind towards her. Then she stops writing to God and she writes letters to Niti, her sister. Patriarchy silences her and removes her from the only person she loves, <coughs> her sister, Niti. Patriarchy here stands for the man who raped her. She uh, tells her you should not speak a single word to her. And she's a speechless person for the time being. So this speechlessness of the subaltern, the speechlessness of the... Uh, the, the one who is existing on the margin. No, we should be reminded of the, you know, the hegemony and the people who hold some power and they are on the, they are the decision makers, they are the ruling class, they are the powerful people and they, they will be, you know, they will be forcing you or they will be dictating terms to you and you will be, you know, um, you just like puppets, you will be dancing, you'll be dancing to the two tunes of these people. So this is the same thing that happens in the case of Seeley. And, you know, uh, she actually, uh, uh, she then starts writing to her sister, Neti, uh, sister, uh, sister, Neti, and uh, Seeley's continues, uh, continuous contact with her sister is also obstructed. By de then what happens is the re letters that she gets, uh, receives from the reply, the replies that re she receives from uh, Nitti, it is actually uh, confiscated by this uh, man. And, you know, she is not given any access to the letters. Uh, then, you know, Celie gradually begins uh, to view herself uh, in the same, uh, in, you know, in this way, like, I make myself wood. I say to myself, Silly, you a tree, you are a wood. Then that is how uh, I come to know trees fear men. So she thinks that, you know, she brings another imagery there. The, even trees are afraid of men because they are unpredictable. They silence you. They won't allow you to raise your uh, voice or uh, express yourself. Uh, you know, in the color purple, quilting, uh, quilt making and letter writing are significant in the sense that they both work to piece together Seely's fragmentary world. That is it. Uh, you know, the imagery that we have to understand is, uh, first thing, we have to have a clear idea of what is a quilt. A quilt consists of lots of fragments, means uh, you know, it need not be from the same material. We won't be making the same material in order to make the quilt. No, we will be taking different types of materials, different designs, different textures, different colors, different fabric from different people, altogether different people. All your relatives materials you'll be sewing, uh, I mean, stitching together. In the same manner, the color purple, uh, in color, the color purple, uh, quilt making and letter writing are significant in the sense that they work together 
um, they both work to piece together Celie's fragmentary world. The letters, you have to piece it together. You have to stitch the letters together on, in order to get a, a, you know, a fragmentary picture of the fragmentary, fragmented life of Celie. In the same manner, only when you stitch together the pieces of fabric that you get from, that you have taken from all your relatives, then only you will be able to integrate it into a perfect whole, a complete design, and it will be a usable material. In the same manner, only when you stitch together, only when you bring together, only when you connect together all the letters, you will get an idea about the life that Celie had to go through. Whether the quilt maker uses old clothes or crisp new co cottons, she begins to work on her patchwork quilt by cutting or ripping her fabric apart. Now you have your clothes here, you cut it and you rip it and then you stitch it. This is what you do in quilt making. A patchwork quilt cannot come into existence without the trending. So in order, for example, it has to perfectly match with the next piece. So that process has to happen in the uh, quilt making process. This deconstructive act, paradoxically, also one of her most creative act of courage, necessity and faith. This is what we, you know, how, uh, how innovatively, how creatively, who you design the small pieces of fabric or scrap that you take from different people, how you stitch together and make a perfect design, perfect, beautiful design, integrate into a perfect whole in the same manner. She is also trying to create, uh, you know, trying to sew together all her experiences in color, in the color purple, in order to define her own life, in order to give a new definition to her identity, to her, to her fragmented world. Tearing seems a singularly appropriate place to begin because being torn is so familiar an experience for women. Tearing, you know, you have to tear the uh, cloth into small, small pieces. You tear, you take a small piece from one uh, thing and you tear and uh, take another piece from another material, but you stitch together. Here, this tearing, this piecing and the stitching, it is done creatively. There is some effort, tremendous effort going into the working of it, making of it. This is illustrated in the life of Seely. Seely's life, her quilt and her writing are all made of discontinuous pieces. Again, just like the fabric, just like the colors, just variety of colors, variety of designs, uh, you know, different sizes that are sewn together. Celie's life, like quilt and her writing fragmented letters. She is writing today, she will be writing next week, maybe writing again after two weeks, but she is continuously writing. Maybe all these are fragments and these are all discontinuous pieces. Her chosen form of self-expression, letter writing, consists of short, discrete units of discontinuous prose broken off and interrupted by the demand on her life. Yet Walker makes that discontinuity into Walker makes the discontinuity into a sharply, I'm sorry, into a shapely narrative. She gives a perfect shape to her narrative. Thus, she works with the text as well as the textile. The textile is worked, you know, she's working on the te textile or different textiles in order to make it a quilt. And Alice Walker works on the text, the fragmented experience in order to weave into a complete novel or a narrative, a perfectly woven narrative. That is the color purple. As Lacan writes, we can never say all things, not all things to all people. That is it. This, the quilt will not contain all pieces. The quilt is not made of a single material. It is bits and pieces. We, cannot, we can never say all things, not all things to all people. We won't be able to do that. We can only say something to someone, somewhere appearing to be a syncretizing and unifying art patchwork is the art of the individual picking upon something. I repeat those sentences. It's beautiful. 
uh, what Jack uh, Lacan has said, we can never say all things, nor all things to all people. We can only say something to someone, somewhere, appearing to be a syncretizing and unifying art. Patchwork is art of the individual picking up on something, somewhere. It is a work of someone or of someone's. It is often collective, often collective enterprise, but at heart, always idiosyncratic. If in one sense, it is always the same story of thread and fabric and composition, it is never precisely the same. Soon over the course of time around which it is woven and of which it bears the mark, patchwork reinvents itself in each of its quills. It is structured around the desire for alteration, alteration in which its power resides. Only you can tell your story to say and say again something, some way to someone. You can't tell the whole thing. We can't, we can't say everything to everyone. We can say only something to someone and something, some way to someone. That is the fragments we are putting together and we are trying as readers, we are trying to create a meaning as writer. She was trying to create to define a meaning to her own self, to define her identity. And we try to uh, put all these patchwork together in order to read, a, give a perfect meaning, in order to give a full interpretation to the text, a perfect reading of the text. Thank you.